Um, so uh, this BOF is about uh, well, wacky ideas, things that would be nice to have. Um, basically, what I'm trying to achieve, this is uh, most, mostly a workshop and the project is basically uh, only there so people on IRC can make suggestions and, st and stuff. Most, uh, most of the actual work will happen on the whiteboard. Since this, uh, we're trying to... Um, so, um, yeah, so the idea is to collect all the ideas we have and uh, discuss whether they are worth pursuing or not and perhaps, well, in the ideal case, uh, get, uh, get, uh, get uh, some uh, plan to, uh, for implementation on uh, perhaps even a transition plan. Um, I brought a few ideas with me, so I believe did some others, and I think I'm, uh, we're going to kick this off by about one or two minutes presentation on each idea, so uh, to get a <coughs> and then we can discuss whether, uh, whether anything should be pursued or not. Okay, uh, I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to start with the first idea I had, which was uh, per package build dependencies. Um, yeah, uh, the problem is that some packages interdepend on each other when building. The worst thing, uh, the worst case in this regard is the tool chain, where you have to basically build a small compiler without any uh, operating system support so-called freestanding compiler, then you use this compiler to build the kernel, then you use this compiler to, uh, uh, and the kernel header files to build the libc, then, then, uh, then you have all the header files together to build the real compiler. And so, so you basically have to uh, go through the, uh, through the compiler uh, source tree twice. And well, in fact, it's even, even more complicated due to things like libgcc. Uh, which the libc has to link against, but which in turn links against the libc. So you have, have to go four times to the GCC source tree. And the idea would be to ha um, to allow um, uh, in each packet stanza in the, in the Debian control file another build depends line. And uh, essentially, if uh, if you, you can uh, if you can satisfy all the build dependencies for all the, uh, all the packages, then uh, you do, and you call the normal binary uh, binary all uh, binary binary arc binary indep targets. And if you cannot, then you uh, try, uh, try to satisfy as much as possible, and then you call a single package binary dash package name pa the targets to build the single packages. Out of, uh, out of the source tree, then you don't clean out the tree, uh, uh, unpack the next source, um, and, and so on. And uh, this way you can bootstrap um, automatically, which uh, comes in handy if you're building cross compiler tool chains, which basically have the, se uh, have the, same, uh, the same setup procedure. Uh, but uh, since you already have a, f a fully functional host system, you uh, may be interested in. Uh, getting, getting, uh, and building these in an automated way. So th this w would be the first idea. Uh, would anyone else like to present the second idea, or f for this buff, or should I continue? Or? I think it's the thing about architectures and using the same things. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, we'll talk about that here. You're the experts. So. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm basically the, uh, I'm considering myself the moderator, more or less. <laughs> uh, the idea was to basically have this based on audience person participation. I have an idea, but it's not related to this. That I sure. I want to hold on to your others. I want to go first. Yeah, the, the it's not ex uh, uh, there is no formal topic, just nice, uh, things that would be nice to have, so. Would it be alright if I use the whiteboard as 
Sure, so that, that's why it's here. We haven't got a frame. I think he thought that was a frame, but that's just another screen. So we'll we'll have have we Skip do it. have some flip yeah. shots as well at around the place somewhere, if that would be useful. Yeah, you yeah. should put yeah. out yeah. on the top of the chimney. Yeah, you could put it there, I suppose. That would work, wouldn't it? No landscape. Apart from those, it's not too simple. Except for short people. <laughs> <laughs> In the bottom half. <laughs> Organisation is everything. Go ahead. Um, let me outline briefly the problem that I have and, and the proposed solution for how to resolve it. Um, as a Debian user, I love Debian. It has so many packages, everything works right, and everything's great. Um, when I usually have problems, it's always the same uh, usual suspect, which is hardware that does not have a driver already built into Linux, which leads to either one or two scenarios. Don't use it, or use a proprietary driver in order to use the hardware. I don't like proprietary drivers because in my experience, usually, that when bad things happen, like kernel lockups, it's proprietary drivers. Um, the issue, however, is, is I can't just go to the manufacturer and say, look, I, I don't want your software. I, I just want the hardware. Give me the hardware, give the specifications, to the Linux kernel folks because I trust them to provide a, a working driver for your hardware. <coughs> Problem there is, I'm just one person. Why do they care? Just go away. Um, so I have a proposal for resolving this issue. The issue is um, I wanted to create a service that runs at boot time. It's a strictly voluntary service, not saying it runs by default. It's a feature that uh, at boot time you can say, you know, I'm going to run the service this time. And the service I want to run is uh, it's a it's a bootstrap operation on top of the Discover service. Uh, at boot time, when when you typically run your system, uh, Discover or, or something like Discover is one that detects all your hardware, uh, determines which modules to drive your hardware, and, and loads them into the kernel, and everything works great. Um, I propose a package that provides a service which I call. Uh, uh, I think Should I use green? Blue. Uh, blue Suzy so Bear. We can get rid of green. Oh, right, okay. Yes. <laughs> Alright, um, called Inform Vendor. It's a service that, uh, in the list of services that run, I want it to run after. Uh, Discover so all the modules that can detect the current currently uh, current hardware that is that has Linux kernel support uh, up through networking. So I have uh, access to the internet, and then right here I'm going to have a service that says tells the user uh, I'm going to pause here for a moment. Uh, I see all the hardware you have available on your system. The following uh, hardware I have drivers for. The following hardware I don't have har uh, drivers for. Um, would you like me to inform the vendor of the ones you don't have drivers for that your hardware doesn't work? And as a result, I'm not going to use your hardware. I'm going to recommend this hardware instead. Now, the idea here is, is uh, I don't want to, it's not about nagging the hardware vendor. It's, it's informing the hardware vendor. But also, uh, so this is going to inform the vendor of broken hardware. But I also want to set up uh, um, uh, another website, uh, MySQL database, that it takes a snapshot, takes a snapshot of your hardware, sees all the stuff you have running, uh, takes an MD5 sum hash on your uh, MAC address of your card, your Ethernet card, or, or connection, I should say, uh, sends it off to the database so that Debian can have a running total so far of all the hardware that all the Debian users have. And so, for example, this hardware vendor whom my thing doesn't work for can say, I ignore you, you're only one person. Debian says, no, he's not just one person. We have 20,000 users using your hardware. Are you sure you really want to anger all those 20,000 people and say, I'm not going to provide you with a Linux, native Linux uh, driver for your hardware. So that's the idea, is to have 
uh, make the vendor aware on a, voluntarily by the user. It's, it's not, it's, this isn't, isn't meant to be a spam. It's not mm -hmm. supposed to be a automatic ones all the time. It's strictly voluntary by the user. It requires uh, user input saying, yes, I want you to inform the vendor. Uh, it does not always run all the time. It's just another option on your Grub or Milo menu. Um, but also lets Debian know what the true statistics are on all the hardware out there that's currently being used. I think um, the statistics code uh, portion is the more useful thing in this, since uh, the vendors are probably just going to ignore the, uh, the One or two, but what if you had 20,000 emails one day of just saying, I'm sorry, your hardware doesn't work, I'm going to recommend my user use this hardware instead. Yeah, but when it's a form email, it will just be spam, so yeah. Mm -hmm. In, in any case, like the Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu people have made this uh, hardware uh, inventory system that actually, you know, I think it's the first time you actually run it. It asks you, do you want to send my your hardware data to the Ubuntu database? So they already have okay. mm -hmm. such software, uh, but it's graphical only right now, and uh, a database. And we should coordinate, I think, with them in some way, so we could like make huge pressure on the vendor. Mm -hmm. Um, that that would be at least okay. What well, I was asking was it's not just an alien thing; it's any distribution that you do. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. uh, I was going to make a point. There's a, there's a sort of positive side to it as well, because as well as the, the hardware um, that isn't supported, you can also say, well, look, you know, there's uh, twenty thousand users who have card A that isn't supported. Actually, there are five million users using products from manufacturer B or whatever, oh, and right. actually you can start to estimate the size of the Linux market, which is something that holds a lot of defenders back. They, go, they know it's out there, right. but they, they don't really know how big it is because right. nobody's actually attempted formal statistics gathering, right? It's Everyone's kind of like Linux counter, mm -hmm. but that was voluntary. Right. Okay. So that's probably a you know severe underestimate. It's effectively a cop con for hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Do we yeah. you know is the Ubuntu machine database online or is it just something they keep it themselves so we don't actually know does anyone know? Uh, if you say that's, that's kind of right. this thing, um, but obviously if it's only... So, mm. so uh, I was wondering, this is very few statistics available, just like, uh, work out CPU, work out, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah, uh, like, mm. then statistics are also items. Yeah. Then it's all kind of yeah. So yes, it's just that idea. Yeah, I think it's about another idea. But sure, just if your run domain is maybe like on top of you there or something generic yeah. like that, so it's not only them and Right. Mm. Should we do it? I mean, it should in fact be stuck on pop. It's pop pop pop. There's a couple of comments, of course. I mean, uh, there's one operator in Cord Vista that has quite a lot of hardware compatibility problems. And the fact is, uh, with the kernel as it is, it's got the best device support. So I was a little bit worried that we might be sending out a message like, oh, we're really struggling here, but the fact is we're not, I think. Well, I think that's why you, you can emphasize the positive aspect as well, you know, like five million monthly yeah, yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. 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 If, uh, if, if we contact the vendor, we, we, would, uh, we, we would also say, uh, we would also present on the web pages like, this hardware, uh, this, this and this hardware doesn't work, but yeah. this, uh, this uh, all, of, uh, all of this yeah. long list does. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The website shouldn't start from the negative perspective. Here's mm. the list of the things that don't work. You know. well, so sometimes, it's more, sometimes it is more useful. Yeah, indeed, but you know, yeah. do you want both to be presented? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm trying and working on uh, getting uh, uh, providing help for uh, support for people to get the lap laptop uh, and getting the be best out of it. And uh, I think uh, uh, I, I came up with quite uh, a similar idea and uh, it's a little bit of thing that uh, could be helpful. Is that today, uh, if you have a one laptop, uh, many laptops share the same device, PC device, PCI device and so on. And uh, having such a database could also be used to inform the user uh, about, okay, you have this device, and if you want, you clicks on some kind of links, and they get to this page where it says, this is all your device, and this is how you can configure it to get fast out of it. Uh, and uh, finally, it could also be used for the BI team 
to say, okay, today people have to do this to get the, to the, uh, uh, have the machine to work, uh, uh, wireless start to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, this could also be a support to, uh, to have mm -hmm. the statistics and to have people say in one click, this is how to get your machine to work and to get the best. Uh, I just had a thought that it could be cool to see the power reliability with hard drives, for example. <laughs> It'd be great to know what ones are reliable, the hardware is better, you know. Yeah. So there's lots of things that could come out of this. Trump was with Google hard on hard disk report. Yeah, <laughs> but, but Google didn't tell which hard drives are more reliable than the others. Yeah. So yes, it's the natural manufacturers in any way. Yeah, I guess that's more useful information for them to keep secret. Huh? Yeah. We all buy the crap ones. The other thing I think <laughs> is that um, if you did have hardware, if it's not recognized by a driver, you're obviously going to have to have something like a PCI ID just to be able to look up to see what it is, to know yeah. Yeah. what vendor. Um, but likewise, you could then also see if um, there's a new driver available and a newer kernel to suggest the user that they can upgrade to oh, get yeah. functionality. Likewise, you could also know which version of the driver is in a kernel and blacklist it and say, well, actually, the driver you've got, although it's present in the current kernel configuration you've got, is known to be faulty. Um, and don't use it or go to another version or stuff like that. So there's a lot of uh, feedback you give to the user based on <laughs> integrating with back master blocks or like mm. you know to have all the users to get you are kind of in the mm. stable. Yeah. 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 Generalizing it, uh, it would be a, a, a service that creates an online database yes. uh, for, uh, from uh, information that is available on the system about possible upgrades. Mm. Much, much like package, uh, package tool, but uh, a bit more generic. Uh, yes. With, with plugins. So it gets a bit complicated. Like I don't know, you guys like yeah. this this can fit things. And Sorry, this can fit in Enrico's work on Libet actually. Yeah. Uh, because the system has pluggable uh, data collection, so yeah. it, it could fit. And you want to have some annotation support as well on your website, so that you can say, oh yeah, this this uh, motherboard does actually work, but it's made. <laughs> yeah. you get it, you get it, even within the, uh, the hardware that has driver support, some yeah. is much better than that. Yeah, really find that out from you. Yeah, the, the problem is uh, 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 most people that see this information are, uh, are seeing this information uh, because they bought the hardware and are right. running the service. So. Sure, but it could help somebody else considering buying that yeah. particular board. Or, yeah. Um, you know. Well, I want. You're considering buying a new laptop, and you think, "Well, oh, I don't know how to choose one." I, all I know is, I want one where everything works, right? Now, can someone give me a list? And that's actually quite a hard thing to do, yeah, yeah. even if you're a real geek. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I you, think you could, if, if, yeah. if this could match back to a list of, you know, this laptop contains all these devices which all have a tick in the box. Then, right. You know, well, the other yeah. thing I really like about the idea is, I really want to emphasize: okay, if I have, if I already bought the hardware and it does not work. I would like a list that says, okay, we know it does not work. Here's all the alternatives that do work. Mm -hmm. So I'll know, don't waste my time in broken. Get one of the ones that's known to work. I'm much happier that way. There's a big different problem with that, though. That it's very hard sometimes to identify exactly which bit of hardware is going to work because you can't rely on the model number, you can't rely on the description, you can't rely on the manufacturer, you can't rely on the vendor. Sometimes you have to really go in and almost Second C. Yeah, you almost have to sort of test the circuit board itself to see which, whether you're going to get a one or a zero on this, that particular okay. output and see which chipset you've got. Because the FCC ID is yeah, yeah, vaguely reliable <laughs> uh, indicates to which hardware it actually is. Yeah, yeah. but it can be resolved by some kind of dependency. Uh, so if, if you have this kind of PCI device within the T60 um, laptop, uh, it makes it very difficult for the, yeah. Because it makes it difficult from the user perspective, because they say, "Well, I've got a model six four seven Belkin PS eight three four. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, yeah. You might have to make two thousand six. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was just thinking it could attract other communities. I, mean, I, I don't know about you. I just play Quake, and they all love showing the specs of their machines. Uh, and true. Yeah. Nice <laughs> 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 exactly. So it could it could get some people just interested just for the. You are connected to the internet. Yes, you do. Uh, can you just visit? Uh, I have this web page I'm working on currently. Can you pop it up on um, IRC? Yes. I'll be right back. Just need to hold it. Which? The couple of them off. <coughs> or just go to wiki uh, 
debian.org slash debian on capital, yes. That's it. This debian on, this is debian on. That's an attempt. And the idea is to get uh, support for users <coughs> how well is my um, device working. If currently there's only one page because it's test, test page, go to ThinkPad and then T60. Uh, yes, the, the link. Uh, and uh, there was, currently it's done manually because um, I want to do one thing at a time. And so the first part to help the user who wants to buy this laptop and say, okay, this works, this works, this works. Mm -hmm. And if everything works, uh, apparently <coughs> says, uh, can you go up in the page? We end up with a uh, logo, which is uh, a trailer, an upper right, yeah. where uh, currently it's, it's an ID. It says uh, something like three star, so the laptop is working properly, four star. Both of them, everything is perfect. And then two star, mm -hmm. you're better. And uh, five star comes pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that people. Uh, and below <laughs> it says on the it says how to install. I mean, just people find those kind of page today, and it's uh, scattered everywhere on the web. Yeah. And you have to look for and the laptop for it. Um, Linux on laptops seems to be the yeah. most concentrated yeah. mm. place for such information. But a lot of us have a date modes. But it's mostly, it's mostly just linked to so people who have to install it first. Yes. Yes. So it tells you the hard way to do it. Yes. And it doesn't tell you that now, a year later, in fact, it just works. And yeah. usually it's not uh, on a wiki. I mean, I've made many of such page, and that's why I came up with this idea. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's great, that's um, And mm. it's not on a wiki, so people, if they have comments, have to write mail or something. Yeah. And it's Whereas if it's a Debian wiki or a proper yeah. tool that uses database, it could be. I think I think important thing to uh, think for something mm -hmm. like that is that uh, there's a huge date of the last change and last update on the on the, on the beginning of the page. That's or oh, yeah. the, the things like uh, th this information uh, matches kernel version some, something like that or. Because um, I even on, on like uh, ThinkWiki, that part which is like maintained quite well, and the yeah. uh, developer you find out the information. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we generally uh, so, so to sum, to sum it up, we uh, there, there exists uh, some uh, some projects already, but uh, uh, and the nice uh, nice to have would be working together. There's also um, you know, Greg um, Crow Hartman's uh, kernel drivers team that they've got. Um, uh, where they um, they made it like a general offer to device manufacturers to yeah. write free drivers. Yeah. So yeah. Um, already also, uh, Kenshi Muto has written an, uh, a hardware compatibility check tool where you input the output of LSGCI mm -hmm. and it tells you which kernel drivers you need and yeah. if it's supported. And that, that information is generated directly from the kernel, mm -hmm. as far as I know. So. <coughs> I think I think uh, we could also persuade uh, him to uh, to, uh, to list uh, from which version onwards it's supported or something like that. It's what you need, isn't it? The app Menace, uh, um, LSPCI, yeah. Unit Minus R, um, and the list of yeah. um, Another idea. Um, this this could be a live CD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I would. It'd be something like a take for a test drive before you buy a hardware. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. yeah. come up with a, a USB stick and like you can put it in Yeah, um, that's a bloody good idea. <laughs> 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 Just keep on data and then walk out the shop again. Yeah. 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 Tesco for three hundred fifty. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, just ask uh, ask a uh, salesperson. Can I just boot this CD for a test drive and it scans the machine? Uh, you have a copy on, uh, of all the data that's currently known on, uh, on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be really nice. Yeah. We should Any, anyone for Lenny, it will be perfect, really. And like, it would be quite simple to hack the Debian store to do that, really. Yeah. Or Debian Debian Live Helper. Uh, okay, any volunteers? Yeah. <laughs> I could I could I could see you know, someone do the demon that or the thing to send it to a database. Yeah. Uh, the, the live series is easy. Yeah, that'd be easy. 
Yeah, I mean, on the web stuff, that's actually probably the big bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, setting up a database isn't difficult either. I mean, I could do it, but no, you know, I got the telling things, things that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so if yeah. anyone's interested, maybe we can set up something. What would be nice? Um, I don't know if currently there's some effort to uh, uh, to to get closer to you to 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 uh, to get the uh, yeah. hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They have their their database is online. Hwdb.com. Uh, that shows the latest 20 entries that were submitted and not through all of them and they're all broken. Yeah. Cool. But it's, it's good because building up the database uh, <coughs> it's quite a database because yeah. you have uh, USB uh, PCI and you have tons of manufacturer tons of source of information conflicting the one with the other. Yeah. So this, this could uh, easily turn to quite a big project, couldn't it? Really? Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's think about this. I mean, that's why because that's why actually I uh, I came up with this idea and say don't go with a lot of bad thing but I think it's necessary. It, it would be better if this was connected to a lot of bad. Um, everyone from the app from uh, Lib SMI BIOS, you know, yes. service tags and all that kind of stuff. So throw that in there as well. Yeah. Is someone writing this down? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <the> cameras. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, well, uh, I think I think uh, no, this is the this is the point where. Uh, we should look for a volunteer that coordinates things. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I volunteer for the live CD. Okay, so that's not a team. Yeah, you're starting. I'm starting. Anybody uh, working with the database um, would be interesting. Yeah. Well, thank well, you. Well, you. Okay, the name for it. How about Leanne will look for it when we start talking about it next week? Or, or cool. we'll set up a, a Debian Alive thing for, I don't know. Yeah. Can you do that, Simon? Sure. But uh, isn't that the question of whether you want to do it within Debian or some, at some floating level? It usually be done in the live nowadays. Right. I mean, yeah. like, you know, a sort of Debian-wide project or, or a new Linux-wide yeah. project? I think it should eventually become like a new wide one because you always want to share. I mean, mm. We always yeah, face true, the same yeah. hardware problems. But it yeah. depends which aspect. I mean, the, clearly the, the detection and reporting stuff is general and should be yeah. upstream. But I mean, database, you might want, if you're trying to make a database, what does Debian run on this? Yes. And mm -hmm. that's kind of somewhat specific. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so the Debian live part would have to be Debian. So I, th I think, you know, yeah, that's true. Like, but you would be using the absolute code. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if we can just steal the Ubuntu hardware stuff, or we can talk to whoever's running this, really. So, so look, can we just. How about just we just put our email addresses down and go on some mailing list and then let's go from there or something? Yeah. Like yeah. Well, I've seen uh, Mark Shuckleworth already this morning, so mm. he's there to be asked. Yeah, there's, there's lots of Ubuntu people, someone who would know about who's doing this. So, uh, you know, have we got a piece of paper or something on it? Yeah. yeah. I think it would be better just better to write like an email to you that comes this this man list with yeah. <coughs> yeah. I think that's the yeah. easiest thing. Yeah. Okay. Um <coughs> good one. Next idea. <laughs> I may have one. Yeah. Go ahead. Um well we'll discuss Simon's idea. It's it's uh I don't want anything, it's pretty simple. Um <coughs> I really don't like uh meta package at all. Uh, what a meta package is, is like the GNOME package. It, have, it contains probably nothing, except it depends on the whole GNOME package is yeah. used for a system. Yeah. This has a major drawback, which means like if you want to have most of GNOME, you're unable to, like, if you, if, you, if you first install the GNOME meta package, it installs a lot of stuff. If, and if you remove one of them afterwards, it, you get the GNOME package removed, okay. which is a bit annoying because on the next update, you won't get a new software part of the GNOME suit if, you, if there's a new one coming out. Um, so the idea is will be to use dead tags uh, to enable the packaging sy system to subscribe to some kind of channel uh, of package, like some kind of RSS feed of a package. Uh, I mean, you could say uh, configure like this this channel thingy uh, to get every packages uh, answering the dead tags uh, um, shoot GNOME, and then you will be able to uh, being asked asked, hey, there's this new package in GNOME suit available. Do you want to install it? Or uh, you could always say yes to that and, and remove package uh, 
uh, and needed ones when you have to free some disk space. Um, so that that's I'm trying to get Erin Cosini uh, uh, um, to talk to me for I don't know <laughs> half an hour to explain how we we could implement that, and I haven't been able to do so yet. But I would like to uh, experiment on that and. But I would like to have some input on which current tools on Debian could fit uh, that. Because um, I don't know where it could be integrated. Like, it will be integrated, should it be integrated into DPKG at some point, into Aptitude, into an, a very new tool? How do you coordinate between all that? Um, are the packages <coughs> in that way marks auto for. Uh, Attitude, whatever, like it's pretty. I don't know. Uh, is this a good summary? Mm. Like the first part is already done, actually. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, you could, you could, you could sum it up like like that. I yeah. I was wondering if anything was missing or so. Uh, you're missing the, the like it's missing the, the rational of it. Yes, the reason but why it's annoying is it stands, which is yeah. true. Uh, but it's well, there is an issue with there's a difference between the set of packages in known desktop or Ubuntu desktop or whatever, and all known packages known to man, which is quite a lot bigger set. The dev tags will presumably tell you about everything you know. Yeah. But it won't tell you the things that we you know, the sort of standard desktop set. You need a new what you really want to say, I mean, especially on Ubuntu, you want to say the standard desktop set, apart from all those Asian fonts. We, we could, <laughs> yes, we, we could probably ha add a new dev tag, uh, okay. refine the current um, vocabulary facets, whatever yeah. it's called now. Then. You've got you've got sweet gnome at the moment. You can have sweet gnome desktop, or you could, or you could split sweet gnome into, into two. No more, no they main, mean, then core, or any other thing. But I think that there is an issue there. You don't necessarily want everything. Yeah. Well, GStreamer uses this uh, approach that they have. GStreamer plugin is good, bad, and okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Works. Yeah, but it's on the functional level, level not on uh, mm. Are you going to need this? So well, that is there, true. There, there, there would have been, been some. Uh, G streamer common, G streamer uncommon, G streamer rare, or something like that, <laughs> like in magic. Well, I suppose the point is DevTags has these great pile of facets, so there's probably a facet for, I don't know, uh, popular. Yeah. For? <laughs> popular, or popular. Uh, um, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, the, there's like, the next step about that is to replace task cell with uh, something using that actually. So you could like install the walls, so a wall kind of shoot at the end of uh, the installation process. So yeah, but this, this opens up a bigger issue about how do you integrate aptitude with dev tags? I mean, or do you use a different tool in the top? <coughs> it's such a different way of looking at the world, not different, but, you know. It's, I still haven't seen Enrico's kind of searchy tool thing, which is quite funky. Um, what about? I can't remember what it's called. Um, but you know, you sort of search for things and then it reduces yeah. your set yeah. until you get something you want. Type. Which is kind of different from having a big list of everything mm -hmm. and knowing the name. <laughs> Are you <laughs> being trying to have a kind of uh, pretty flexible framework, framework where you could like, you know, specify any dev tags uh, uh, query? Because like, I'm a Haskell programmer, I would like to know every single new Haskell library to be installed in my IP. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, and I have an idea because uh, it has one, one problem I have, have experienced is that uh, especially when a new release uh, comes, uh, sometimes, I don't know, for example, for example uh, CPU frequency scaling, um, today um, in search I think there were no uh, CPU frequency scaling installed by default, so everybody choose one and uh, then uh, edge comes in. And um, people don't know that it was that this particular package was preferred and installed by default, and it's just not yeah. common. It's so yeah. mainstream or yeah, that's mainstream that's Debian. Yeah, like Ubuntu have their uh, Ubuntu minimal Ubuntu standard meta packages. 
Which side of the problem at this point? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's very annoying that. Yeah. Every Ubuntu I've installed, the first thing the users ask is, please take all their version fonts away. They're going to be long list. <laughs> which breaks on your desktop straight away, which is actually something they, as idiot users, want to, to just give them the standard things when it updates. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's, it's broken, really, quite badly. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, in general, it's, uh, that's a big problem. I think, uh, I think Lars did some, uh, did, did a bit of work on automated testing on that. Um, the difference between a freshly set up system and an, a, a system that, ha that has been upgraded from the last version. I think that they, they might be interested in automated testing for for stuff like that. Mm, it's true. Yeah. Because there is quite a lot of things that slowly go wrong if you've upgraded version five versions. Yeah. Because first, because of the problem that there's now a new standard package, mm -hmm. and there isn't really a good mechanism mm -hmm. for that to propagate. So, because often you'd quite like to say, given the choice, yes, please, I just have the standard thing. You know, I, I don't want to carry on using what I was using three versions ago because it's installed. It's not a I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> 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 but does dev tags actually solve this problem? No, no, no. I mean, it, it, can it in theory? What do we need in to theory, make this it, happen? It, it has something to do with the notion of mm. this common and uncommon uh, package. You, you will need a tag that would be like, I don't know, uh, preferred or recommended, but I know that we tend to have a lot of flame wars in our community and Every time we have to, we have to choose on something. Uh, I don't know. Well, it was Zmax scale all over again. Because you're trying to define just aspects of the thing. I'm not trying to say this is preferred. You know, that's actually a, an attribute of Debian. It's not an attribute of of each package on their own. It's a uh, it's a different level. Yeah, which uh, is a bit tricky actually. Yes, and th this mm -hmm. it falls between all these stools. This this aspect of Please give me what's default. No. <coughs> I'm not sure where that where that information should live. You know, I mean, it's a bit. It's, it's like the concept, I suppose, of saying I want to know about all new Haskell packages. It's like saying I want to know about new standard packages or packages I've got that are in fact now not default. If but I'm, yeah, it's, 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 it's the final goal is to replace a uh, task cell mm. or provide an alternative for it. You have to encode that information that. Is already present task cell in in dead tags, so actually there's people making their choices anyway now. So. Yeah, I mean the choice that you know, like you get a particular version of the CPU scaling software installed, you know, has been made. So all we want to do is reflect that in this metadata, so that so you know, if people are arguing about what's preferred, mm -hmm. you say you know, it's already decided in the sense that that's the one you get by default. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, we also have priority standard in the D package, which uh, yeah. I, I would normally uh, 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 So the big problem is basically that uh, if a new priority standard package uh, turns up, it's not automatically installed un uh, unless the user says no. I would assume, uh, assume that, that 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 would happen on an upgrade. Would that make sense? Uh, it's an app thing. Right. Mm. <coughs> yeah. I'm willing to carry on this stuff, uh, but that won't be. I'm, I'm I'm quite busy at the moment, but maybe I'm in like um, spring next year or something. Uh, and so your your question was asked. I think you're saying I want to in form of all the Haskell thing. Uh, attitude is very powerful. You can uh, recently discovered you can, uh, from command line, search a very, uh, a lot of things and, uh, and then your phrase. Attitude ha has broken the facility uh, to search tools by the main criteria, including install, not install. And uh, ask them. It would be better if you just <coughs> from an attitude to say, uh, I, I want to attack. The framework is all there for. On, I want to be informed of all new, all new, uh, new package would be easy. 
and uh, it should be yeah. easy to track. The framework is all there to do actually that really it serves a matter of writing a tool that is oriented um, in a way of uh, some kind of feed reader instead of you know having like a web browser you to has the data to come. Yeah, well, Aptitude keeps track of what's uh, of new packages, and you can uh, you can ask it to uh, out packages that are both new and have a Haskell tag, so for example. Um, uh, yeah, the only problem is that that each package only has a uh, has one new flag. So uh, so basic, basically you uh, um, you have to, you have to view the, the full list of all the groups you're interested in, and then you say forget new. And th uh, then, then you start over, and so there's no no, uh, no way to say um, I've I've looked over the list of Haskell pack uh, packages. Um, pl please reset the new flag for for the Haskell package uh, query, mm -hmm. but keep keep it otherwise. That that would be an idea. Just a comment on that. Um, the way we handle this in um, C4 Studio is we have a, a meta package called uh, C4 Studio, which is basically all our personal favorites and recommendations. And uh, that's you know upgraded along with other packages and pulls in new packages and you do an upgrade. Now, I wonder if you could actually subscribe to these uh, these meta packages. So, yeah. so, for example, there's a bunch of users who all agree that these are the kind of packages they want, like all the Haskell developers. Mm -hmm. So you subscribe to yeah. a meta package. Yeah, um, likely. Uh, it's it's like, yeah. yeah, but I mean, actually, um, you could then sort of uh, just you know, even an individual could post on the on their own site. You know, these are my personal recommendations. Like, yeah. If you want to subscribe to my personal feed, you get the same packages as me. This goes with another topic, which is like uh, people are working on packages that they cannot own now. Mm -hmm. Um, we have uh, with perhaps an idea of reviews that they end up oh, that could mm -hmm. be like reader reviews of packages, but we're going to talk about that in the event community that I'll talk. Um, but there are also people working on some kind of Amazon style recommendation mm -hmm. based on popcorn. Uh, I don't remember who it is, unfortunately. Uh, so we will have that data pretty soon. So that's definitely something that would be mm -hmm. great to include with that. Yeah, I suppose what I mean is it could almost be on a personal level as opposed to like a project wide level. Mm -hmm. So like say you were working in a programming team with like uh, eight other people, you know, you could share your uh, your packages, you know, and uh, do it that way. It doesn't have to be from the yeah, itself. Have to have just build essential, you can have some obscure flavor of it for your yeah. needs. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a powerful idea, I think, potentially. Yeah. Being able to say, mm -hmm. you know, use this package set so there's an easy button to say, yes, get me the package set. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's what we currently do for our commercial customers, is that we, we actually have a, um, a sort of recipe um, that builds the exact distro that they want and generates the ISO image to give them a, an installer and also an app source to yes. if they just want to get like today's packages. Yeah. So, you know, that's for the smallest groups of like, you know, like half a dozen people, right. you know, and they get their, their own ISO. So, so, um, if anybody wants to find out more about that, yeah. what do you use? Yeah. Um, well, basically, it's a, um, it's a mixture of um, there was a there was a paper a while back called um, CDD Custom Debian Distribution oh, Framework, okay. and then um, we took some pieces from PDK, which is the Progeny's mm. uh, development kit. Okay, I was just going to comment. You could use Live Hub for that sort of task. All right, okay, I'll yeah. talk to you about that. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so it's um, a bit of CDD, a bit of PDK, and we actually um, contributed some improvements to PDK so it would actually resolve dependencies for you automatically, enabling you to build a, a, like a working, installable... Do you your own form. package set? Choose what you right. Yeah, I mean, we have a... So we have modify like some a, packages and then have a yeah. scheme for picking them. So, I mean, there's a 64 Studio package, which is like what you get when you download the main ISO from our site, but it, there are also um, variants of that, which are sort of most or all of those packages, plus, plus a few others that are probably specifically needed for that particular device. Like, they may be making a... Uh, a device without a quality keyboard, like a handheld, mm -hmm. in which case they need a like a, a virtual on-screen keyboard. Right? Mm -hmm. But normal PC users would need that, so that package would be in their variant, and they're all managed through uh, um, through PDK. Basically. Okay. Um, so so where do you keep differences between your version of a, a normal package 
and the Debian version. I mean, they're all on the server. All on the system also yeah, but on presumably if you've patched the source to change yeah, the it's um, well, most of the patches go and um, back upstream. Okay. So. Um, and some of the uh, ones that don't go upstream go straight onto the Debian packages. Yeah. So, right, so you're, but you're not keeping changes which are not going to be accepted because they're just special for Studio 64. Um, that would probably be handled by a script rather than okay. by manipulating the package itself. Because that's the bit I've been trying to work right. out how to keep, you know, how to yeah. manage your little bit of difference. Well, well we have to keep this to work. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you people. Yeah, we use a mixture of uh, track. You know, it's actually a CDD discussion, isn't it? Which we're supposed to be having some other day, I'm sure. Is it? I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, but, um, um, but, uh, but this uh, brings me to an interesting topic. Um, mm -hmm. If you have, uh, if you have a, a um, bunch of packages that are slightly different built mm -hmm. for a customer, mm -hmm. you basically need to mark them as slightly different. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, though, we're just fixing bugs. So um, we fix the bugs, they go up to a certain doing that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's simple. Uh, that's that case, but there's, mm. there's a lot of other stuff you might want to change, right. which isn't necessarily generally applicable on this day. Yeah. Some way of, uh, I, I, yeah. I do that. I have a special repo for a customer, mm -hmm. and the priority is higher than Debian. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because the, the, uh, uh, but if you have a binary package and you don't know whether it came from Debian or it's, it's from you. Well, it's definitely, I maintain the repo, I know it's from me. I, I, what do you mean? Well, the user can't tell what's for looking at that account where the package came from. Yeah, the maintain it. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, would it be an idea to have some sort of uh, some sort of uh, tag on the packages? It says, uh, this, this is the this is the variant built for uh, Foo's customers or mm -hmm. yeah, we, we do something like that. I don't um, think this is really neat, but you could do it. But we actually put it in farming. So, for example, if we uh, fix a package today. Uh, we then backport it to Etch because that's what our current set is based on. And then we put um, uh, whatever the file name is, and then it's like underscore BPO for backports. You mean package um, name? And then dot, yeah. So yeah. it actually, so you can see just looking at the package yeah. name, whether it's the strictly Debian one or the backport one. Do you change that in the Debian change log as well, or just in package? No, that's just in our, in our backported version. So when you, so again, when you look at it in dpackage L or upcat, mm -hmm. you've got to get the Debian version straight, not you're not going to see uh, the, the BPO because that was already in the right. package name. True. I think yeah. it but the, yeah. you know, some field that they, they add them to, they change the maintainer. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. more than that. It's like yeah, the origin or something. It's origin. Yeah, okay. origin like is, a, is uh, the, the release the file from, from the server. It's not okay. inside the package. Uh, okay, I thought there was something about it. Yeah. 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 It's not such a good problem. I, I, I think, yeah. Okay. okay, let's get on to another wacky idea. Yeah, I think I'm going to do <laughs> one of mine then. <laughs> um, yeah, this one's particularly evil. Yeah, um, yeah the idea, uh, the, the problem right now is that we have some, some packages like kernel modules that um, have to be built for uh, against each kernel that we have. So uh, if we have five kernel images, then we need each uh, each kernel module to be to be built five times. And if another kernel image is added, we have to basically rebuild the module uh, uh, source against the new list of kernel images. And this can be done out uh, in an automated way, because uh, currently, uh, currently Debian policy uh, disallows uh, modifying the, uh, the control file at build time, because it um, and because it uh, would uh, modify the list of binary packages to build. The, uh, and if you have uh, 12 auto builders uploading their version of the, of the package with different lists of binary packages, the, the archive software wouldn't know uh, which, which packages should actually exist in the archive. And uh, the idea would be to have uh, some sort of template, like in C++, where you can say, for each, uh, for each package that matches uh, Linux-image-something, we, uh, we, uh, we build another package called foo-modules, uh, whatever, uh, whatever we just matched on. Or for each architecture that exists in the archive, we build a, a package gcc-whatever we just matched on. So, uh, for example, we can put uh, cross compilers like that. It will also be 
Weren't there modules shipping with Debian? Yeah, there are. So this this is a huge uh, coordination effort. Okay. Um, uh, well, so you're suggesting all, all the all the main way of doing. It. Yeah. So uh, the idea would be to upload all this to the auto builds. So if you upload a new kernel image, uh, the auto builder would, uh, uh, would know for, uh, that um, uh, to some black magic that has to be specified still. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that oh we see a new Linux uh, image dash something, but we don't have foo dash modules dash something. Yeah. We need to build that. Gets uh, gets the food, um, uh, gets the uh, source for uh, for foo modules and. Uh, uh, maybe it would call uh, um, binary dash foo dash modules dash something. So a uh, per package target again. Sounds reasonable to me. I mean, I, I, I don't like. It's easy to, to compile your own module for your, the kernel you're running, but still, it's a bit of a. Yeah. Yeah, for time. yeah I, I'm even thinking about uh, having some sort of a personal auto builder uh, uh, that. Um, you, 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 if, you, if you are running a custom kernel on your machine, then uh, tell us with your personal auto builder where to find your kernel and it builds all the module packages for, for your kernel so you can install them right away. And this could, uh, could also be done for, uh, for, uh, for to build the kernel packages uh, themselves. So uh, for each uh, for each Linux dash config dash something, we build Linux dash image dash something. And then, uh, in order to build a kernel, you just make a, make a small package that contains the config file, and uh, the auto builder would pick it up and build the kernel image. Sounds like game changer. Can you install <laughs> <can you laughs> that? So like, I like to read the proposal. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it really necessary to like extend the Debian pointer thing instead of just making some? Meta script that will detect that for you and generate uh, the new control file for the new package. Yeah, the problem is we we are not supposed to modify the control file at build time. Yeah, but you uh, can generate a new package with another control file. Yeah, but uh, this this still needs manual processing. The, the if if you, if you have a, a regular expression that matches uh, that uh, that you can use uh, to. Uh, ge generate the list of uh, binary packages that should exist from the list of binary packages that already exist, and uh, uh, then uh, this this could be implemented in the archive main maintenance of the software, so that if a kernel package is removed, you know, okay, um, we just removed the kernel package, so um, and applying all the known re uh, uh, regular expressions, we uh, we also know that we have to remove all the few modules stuff. For that kernel version as well. Okay. Yeah, but we already, already know that. that we already know that. Uh, in a sense. Yes, but it can. So we don't know that that's in an automatic way that the build system, the, the archive system, can use. Yeah. It's, it's personal knowledge. Yeah. Uh, ba basically, the, uh, 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 presently, it, it works like this: uh, the, uh, you you update the control file by hand, upload the new version. And by uploading the new version um, in the changes file, you have a list of binary packages that are supposed to be built. And, every, uh, and if a package is stopped from that list, the archive maintenance software removes the, 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 the package. Right. And you cannot do this uh, if, uh, if, if you build, uh, build, uh, rebuild the contour file at build time, because that, then you are dropping um, uh, uh, packages for the other architectures, for example. And, um, uh, this would con uh, confuse the archive maintenance software. That's the problem. So we're basically software. saying, I think we want to be able to put world cards in where we can't have that. Yeah, and we want to, to have substitutions in the, uh, in the package name field, which we also can do, okay. since the key for the substitutions is the package name field at the moment. So, and uh, I think another meta level above that. How hard is that to do? Uh, it requires changes in the archive software, it requires changes in the change file format, it requires changes in the DSC format. <laughs> um, uh, it, re uh, it requires uh, changes in package uh, gen control, it probably requires a uh, change in C CDBS and dev helper. Okay, okay. Okay. This level of hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
any other wacky ideas? I got a, a slightly less wacky idea. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Um, it's actually hardly any wacky because it only affects single packages and it doesn't break anything in the game where we have, but it would be very useful for our users. And no. Yeah. Yeah. Just close the door. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you have used OpenVPN package before, or if plugged in, and maybe others, you will have noticed that the init script supports not only the start and stop as any other init script, but also start and a certain instance of the daemon, and stop. So, for example, I can run etc init d if plugged d start, ETH zero and stop ETH here to just affect this one instance of the daemon because the daemon runs once per interface and OpenVPN runs once per VPN I'm running. So I have, besides the regular start and stop for everything, I can control single instances. And I think this is very useful and I think there are several daemons where there are use cases where you want to have several separate instances, for example, to list of different IPs, to have a test server for for your web server, you have a regular web server running on port 80 and a test server running on port 8080. But you still want to control both using the regular init scripts because they get started on startup and, and that kind of stuff. So what I propose is very simple. It's um, for every package that makes sense, which is most packages, besides having um, init the um, service start and stop and reload and restart have an optional instance parameter and then depending on the kind of package have an easy way to create new instances for example for openvpn you just have a new config file in tc openvpn name of the instance dot conf and it detects these for apache you probably need a different like a um, edc Apache instances and then another name per, for the directory and in there all the directory files. So if the daemon is configured by a file, you just have a co second copy of the file with a different name in a well-defined place. If the daemon is configured by a directory, you just have a copy of the directory in a well-defined place. The current places are can just can just be like um, for Apache, for example, we I suggest to use default as the name for the instance that you already have. So if you add new ones, it doesn't break anything. And maybe if you don't want to start all of them by default in startup, <coughs> you have a list of instances to start in etc default package name. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, having having a formal way to do this would, uh, would be quite an advantage. So, so you can have it, uh, have a tool that um, that that you can t uh, tell to, uh, to, um, to, uh, to uh, that you can use to manage your own levels. I we are missing to do that. We are missing an interface, tunnel interface for that, which is query. Like yeah. some way to know the list of the different options. There's no way to do that. Currently. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a, there's a round level editor some, uh, somewhere around so where you can uh, where you can have a, <coughs> a where you can I think even quite complex, uh, comfortable where you uh, have a matrix of uh, services to round levels or something like that. And basi basically, this this would be an extension of that, where where, e where you can basically uh, open a folder a bit a below each each service with the with the with the, uh, with the instances. It might be difficult to, to get the, the the instances into the run levels then. But no, yeah, but yeah, having okay. a formal way for that would be nice thing. Yeah. Well, my proposal would still bind all instances to to the same run level and same number because it's mm -hmm. still the same init script. Which is usually okay, yeah. unless you're trying to to run an Apache and an OpenVPN to tunnel over this Apache and another Apache that defies the interface of the OpenVPN, but then you're doing wacky stuff anyway. <laughs> so I mean, this is very limited in scope. It just means if you have a daemon that um, that makes sense to have several instances, then <laughs> it's about implementing it for the init um, for the init script. It's very useful for the user, and uh, it's the semantics as used by OpenVPN, I think, are very safe. I, I think it would be interesting to push that into an optional policy. Yeah, I, th I think that it, this could be made, uh, pushed into proper policy since uh, uh, currently no packages uh, violate this. Since if they don't support it, then, then they just ignore the, the extra argument. So, so it could be general policy. 
Yeah. Well, there's, there's lots of reasons why you want to do this. So. Or solve this problem in GIMP and then kind of like this way is that we have an, a general init script. Let's say OpenVPN makes a very good use of this because you can have several VPNs up and down. And then we just, when the user wants to create another instance, he creates all the config files and then links to another init script which is like open VPN dot instance and then you can start stop that scripts independently you can add them to yeah. run levels whatever so and it's just a little couple of lines of black magic that you parse the name and from that you get the config directory yeah, the, the, the interesting question is uh, when creating a new instance uh, if you, uh, you have to you have to know how to create a new instance for example, by creating a new config file in a specific directory or something. Yeah. If there was a formal way to, uh, to, to create a new instance that, um, for example, if the package supports, of course, uh, a run a debconf script that lets you configure the new instance um, and creates the config file for you and then, uh, then starts the instance or something like that. That would be a nice thing, I think. Yeah. Nice. It's presuming you actually want a config file that exactly the same as the previous one, except like the port number has changed. Yeah. That there'll be a special little bit of magic for each. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd rather I rather keep it simple. I yeah. think that's not needed. I think if the user no, wants to run several instances, he knows what config files to copy. Yeah. He can just. Uh, oh, yeah, it should not be. It took me quite some time to find uh, find out about uh, this option uh, in OpenVPN actually. So. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know it was there. <laughs> Well, <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. If you don't care about it, you just it doesn't uh, affect you in any way. True. <laughs> yeah. But if you need it, you can't. <laughs> okay, that's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's in um, user share Debian uh, user share doc Debian readme. <laughs> 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 well, automating, automating the creation of a new one is a separate thing. I mean, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, split into two. So I think it will be. And then up with different tools, one XM to list uh, to have a list of uh, available uh, virtual machines, and then uh, one to be. and they have separate tools to build uh, new configuration files. Yeah. So all you have to do is convince the maintainers of each everything that's got the init script in it that you could reasonably want to run two of. Um, while we're talking about init scripts, uh, I can rather make an announcement about another wacky idea that's already being impl implemented at Debcom, at Debcam right now. A lot of init scripts are very much the same. Um, all those demons that don't, don't have any special requirements, they just copy the init script from somewhere else and change the binary. And this is not very um, neat and it's not very useful. And not very, it's hard to, to change things in init scripts and it's hard to fix bugs in init scripts. So what, some of us are hacking on right now is meta init, which is a small file that just describes how you start your daemon. In the simplest case, it's just one line with the command line of your, arc, of your daemon. And you put in your source package, you run the dep helper meta init, it'll create, um, it'll install this meta init file, and then run scripts that create the real init files from the meta init file, optionally for other init systems as well if they're installed. So it's going to, it's, you are supporting immediately all supported init yeah. systems. And you don't have to worry about writing an init script yourself anymore. And for the administrator of the system, you can install custom daemons also by just writing one line in one file in EDC meta init. This is uh, more than a vector idea, it's actually something in progress. And you can find it on wiki debian.org slash meta init MN, the MNDI capital letters. Um, if you are having a package with a in a script and a daemon, I'm very interested to find more um, guinea pigs <laughs> test cases. So just um, talk what to me. Or you know meta init? Meta init. M E. Yeah. M E T A and M. Oh. M E T A and init. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. And um, there's some code that's already on the in a package. This I've changed my first package myself to use it. It's probably, uh, I still have a lot of bugs, but um, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'd like to see more support for it, so eventually it can become more or less the standard way of doing init scripts for anything that doesn't have, does not have special requirements. It does not support this yet, 
it has to be thought through how it, this can be generalized, but it might be a place to support it for other demons in one place later. Yeah. Does this automatically help with the init, init D X I sorry, I net D X I net D problem? No, no, it, it, but it, it doesn't really know anything about, about um, INET, it's just right. INET. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Okay, anyone else? Or you have work here, okay, go ahead. I'm going to have work you think this one is a bit better. Oh, okay, okay. Well, what, 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 what time do you have left? Just a little bit about an hour over time already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll make it quicker. Um, in the uh, bits from the DPL talk this morning, there was a mention of um, needing to get more contributors to do things like artwork and uh, graphics and so on um, to make the distribution sexier. Now, it, it, this has come up uh, in 64 Studio a bit because we have quite a few users who would like to get more involved in contributing uh, things like that, not only artwork um, but uh, you know, in the graphic sense, but also things like um, sounds. Um, I had a request yesterday for some new music uh, for the discovered game in Debian that actually has. Um, uh, copyrighted uh, music in it that, uh, it that just suddenly become aware and so that music needs to be replaced in the game otherwise the package is going to have to go. Um, so um, and the problem is though at the moment um, as far as I'm aware there is no class of membership available to non-programming contributors mm. to the project. So you have Debian developers mm. and everyone else yeah. which is like non-members basically. Mm. So what my uh, wacky idea is a, uh, a new class of membership called Debian Whatever, not Debian developer, but Debian something else. Member. Um, Debian member, Debian artist, Debian contributor, whatever you like. Yeah. Something a bit snappy. Translators um, need the same kind of support as well. Yeah, translators are another yeah, So it's about giving people a title. Well, at the moment. Access. Yeah, yeah, access. Yeah, access. 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 Yeah. They don't need to look where they are. About man page, you contribute to man page yeah. because you don't provide. Uh, because you can't access the machine, and that the developer will not be able to ask for access. Right, you can't go anywhere. So, access to what? That's to, 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 to put it to make an SVM uh, access. So, I think it's much better for access well, to that. Well, Charlie's driving, and so then I will need to finish to like, get the full picture of what you had in mind. Mm -hmm. but it's very like what Holger uh, has proposed with uh, the young community that are. Mm -hmm. okay. That's that's exactly at, at least the problem he described was the same as yours, and yeah. the idea was to create a portal about uh, you know to get people more integrated into mm -hmm. Debian when they are only <coughs> like poor users or small contributors. So yeah, I mean we're not necessarily talking about small contributors. I mean in the case of a translator, you might have somebody who's going to upload a great deal of material, or an artist who's going to do a great deal of work yeah. on the graphics. They're not necessarily a minor contributor, no. um, but there's no there's no sort of uh, mechanism for getting those people as project members because mm -hmm. they have to prove their programming prowess first, mm -hmm. and maybe they're you know like ninety percent artist and only ten percent programmer. Indeed, I and think they it's been recognised for several years, and there's, there's been a void there in the yeah. organisation that's in um, mm -hmm. core technical package skills or. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, the question is what access, because they want to be able to upload their own packages. Uh, and not necessarily. It might just be um, the uh, to be able to. Um, sort of upgrade like a translation or a, a piece of artwork or something because at the moment they have to go through a Debian developer Indeed. who's already busy with their own stuff. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and that's why I don't think that's the, such a huge problem though. The well, you know, we found it. Yeah, it's just translations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fact, I mean, the problem is fundamentally that translation requires a new upload. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. idea was the, yeah. um, I wonder where Eddie is. He wanted to propose yes. something about this. <laughs> <laughs> so Holger's idea was to have um, some kind of karma level, and mm -hmm. so each contribution contribution will like, get you, you know, more points, and that you can have a high score. Um, and yeah, that was that was like at least he proposed that uh, um, in February, like at first. And, but I'm mean, really he was he was still like um, discussing this with a lot of people and getting the whole thing running. So it, I. I um, uh, we should we should follow up on that about this idea um, during the the Debian community mm -hmm. talk. I think. Yeah, no. yeah because it's uh, not just about uh, karma points. Sure. Yeah, yeah, no, the, like, uh, like it's, yeah. it's a good it's a good idea. But I mean, the I think the the sort of uh, peer approval system that exists for Debian developers is a really good one. You know, ensures high quality, even if it does take a long time to try to get in. Yeah, but um, the question is, yeah. should we in fact just 
have a different set of tests. Yeah. Are we going to yeah. be able to give people the same level of access, in which case they have got mm -hmm. to go through some kind of process? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, but you know, they basically just show that they're not complete idiots. Mm. Um, well, a lot of, uh, yeah, yeah, or <laughs> do we know what a different mechanism? And, you know, seems to yeah, we, we, we have, we have a different already. title and some different tests. Yeah, yeah. team maintenance and packages. Mm. Uh, if you have teammates and packages yeah. in Sebastian repository, you can have your, uh, you know, how to work out just uh, upload a new icon directly to that, and then yeah. when the next Debian developer can upload the whole thing, it's yeah, to the archive. Basically, 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 the same goes for translators as well. If, if, if there was a, uh, if there was a uh, so this is basically a te the technical problem. If, the, if there's a mech mechanism for people to upload their contributions, which is, uh, it's not in the form of a Debian package because mm -hmm. uh, because uh, this is not what they do. Right. Um, some autom uh, some automated me mechanism can, uh, can prepare uh, this uh, in, in a way that the, the Debian archive can understand. Mm -hmm. um, then then you need a, uh, you basically need a, a Debian developer to formally sign off on that because yeah. it's an upload. Mm. But you, yeah, I mean, you can still have a peer approval system. Did AJ propose this ages ago, the uploaders category yes. as opposed to yes. maintainers? Yeah, yeah, but getting that's, implemented. That's, yeah, but that's, so that's, that's a title thing, basically. Mm. Yeah, but I think this is basically what's yeah. required, is, is, is the ability to upload something which actually has a relatively small change. I think it's restricted to just that. I mean, yeah. there's, there's other skills the project needs where mm. people need to have a, an involvement. For example, um, we provision handled the reading very badly. Um, not at all. Um, and those people would never make an upload, but they might have the skills to be able to have the gift to the gap to um, yep. right. speed. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, need to, yeah, you need to actually be able to approve those people. If they're going to speak yeah. on behalf of the organisation, they yeah. have to be peer approved, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily... And recognised by the organisation. Yeah, yeah. 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 the big problem... Yeah. Really a good example of uh, something which is more fundamentally different. Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the big problem with the, with the uploader stages uh, is that basically uh, it gives people the, the right to upload but not the right to vote the, se the second class citizens. We, we need the other way around. We need people that are able to vote but not necessarily able to upload direct mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. since they, they, aren't, uh, not, uh, they didn't pass our tasks and skills. Yeah. Uh, so, so, they, so they have the right to vote, our formal members. But they, uh, but they do, do not organ, uh, upload normally, but, uh, but instead go uh, go to some sub project. Mm. I mean, this is what Daily Life is for. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, you can sign up as a guest and get kind of access to whatever. Yeah. But it's hard for yeah. outside yeah. people to see yeah. that or know that. That's that's well, why the Daily Community wanted to address. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. I mean, it's, you don't have to come up with some new rules. It's Daily Life is what a lot of people use. Yeah. Really. And then you've got mentors as well, Debbie mentors yeah. for you know, actually making up goals what they do need. But I would like yeah. I would like these people, uh, like if I have someone that is doing like, you know, spending maybe three days a week to make hard work for Debian, I would like that person to have the right to vote for exactly. our leader. Yeah. 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 And it's just important, the there's a recognition aspect to this. Yeah. You know? yes. It's no good just saying, oh well, you can tell so and so to do it. You know, that if somebody's as you say, spending enough time on their bit. You know, they want membership. Mm. I think that's the that's the or thing. recognition or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but going back to the making the desktop sexy, I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to go back to some bad days where we're going to start theming open office and putting a whole lot of artwork up on our on our desktops. I mean, for me, the desktop is dead, and the, the only thing that people should be using is a web browser. So for me, when when uh, we're encouraging this sort of sexy image with our you know flash. We should go on KD, themed, icon, the music, I, I, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but but, but <laughs> we couldn't, we couldn't put a nice background behind the web pages. <laughs> yeah. There was many levels. Fine, I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And there will always be a, a web page, and, uh, and sexy is not just how yeah. it looks, it's also how it, uh, how it works for, yeah. for normal. Uh, well, I, I don't even have a login page. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I guess you would have my point. It's first yeah. So, call it, uh, like, Debian non-developer members or something. But mm -hmm. well, just Debian Alive. Just going to uh, Debian Alive account holders. Come, come on, come on. Debian community talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. 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 there's yeah. been some good well, great into the show. Because I think the, um, uh, the perception from the outside is that Debian doesn't actually welcome non-developers. 
I think that's I've been sure that's what people think. Yeah, yes, but they, they do. And it's not actually true, but as you say, it's, yeah. it's, it's, not, obvious, it's that. not obvious where you go or who you ask. Or yeah, you because like 100% of Debian members are developers, right? So, Indeed. So, um, yeah. Or, well, 99 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's perceived okay. as a developer only organization. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't mind. So that's my okay. That's my uh, yeah. We all agree. Anything well, else? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you want? I do. Yeah. Uh, I do one. You do one. Okay. Hang okay. on. Do you have your last time? Chico, you have an amazing consultation, man. I need to slap myself. We missed that. Like like <laughs> what time does dinner start? So we missed. Uh, no, it's two. Uh, half past one. Half past one. Okay, right. Sometimes shortly before that. Right. People have to yeah. stop. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have another evil one. Um, you say that yours at the beginning, you know, because yours are hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, the problem is, uh, if, you, if we have an API uh, change in the compiler, then we have to change all the library packages. Or rather, uh, recompile them and re-upload them, and make sure that no one is using the old and the new versions in the same uh, process image. And this, at the moment, this has, all has to be done by hand. Because uh, uh, you cannot change the zone name since it's not a change in the library API per se; it's, it's a change in the in the compiler API, and um, you, you have to change the package name somehow to, to uh, in order to, to force people to up, uh, to upgrade things together. And changing the package name is because of uh, because of policy of not changing uh, the control file at build time. Many process, so you have uh, all the library package maintainers have to uh, have to uh, change their packages and re-upload them, and coordinate these uploads with the auto builder maintainers. So, so you basically have to have a big flag day where um, uh, where uh, you upgrade all the auto builders to the new, the new IBI, and then people uh, st um, th and then you only accept new uh, libraries with the new names and. Before that, you sh you uh, cannot upload libraries with the new name. So, uh, uh, at one particular date, you have to, uh, you basically upload all the libraries another time, and uh, uh, that's um, that, uh, that's a bit uh, uh, that's a bit uh, a bit of uh, coordination work that could be done uh, uh, could be automated, and the idea is. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the idea is to split up the depends field, uh, field into uh, depends and link depends. <laughs> yes. <coughs> and uh, the, uh, the link depends field would work exactly like the normal depends field, except that uh, the, um, the ABI field, which is also new, in, uh, new. Uh, would have to match in the, in those parts it defines. For example, if a package uh, uh, says it's the, uh, uh, that uh, its ABI depends on the C++ ABI, then it would list uh, ABI C++, and a packet build time, this, this would be uh, extended to C++, and then the, the, uh, the version of the, uh, of the ABI, like 1002 for, uh, for current. <coughs> and, um, you uh, ba basically depackage uh, gen control just calls a plugin for each uh, for each ABI that is listed, which finds out which ABI was was used in this current pa uh, in this package build, and inserts that into the control file. And the the, um, the package manager on the user system enforce, uh, enforces uh, that only packages uh, which, uh, with matching ABI depend on each other. That sounds brilliant. Well, well, the link depends. Uh, link depends. Uh, the, uh, uh, we have to dis distinguish between normal dependencies that, uh, that don't care about the ABI, like uh, a tool that I'm going to call, um, uh, and things that I'm going to link where I ca care about the ABI. That's why I want to split these up. Wouldn't this work exactly? Uh, what perfectly for your problem with? Uh, kernel and models, because you can depend on the kernel as if it were an ABI. If you see that your models do not support mm -hmm. that kernel, which is an ABI, so you don't need to do that complaint thing. 
Um, yeah, um, it's slightly related. The problem is that that we have multiple kernel uh, ABIs at the same time in the archive. And um, yeah, but it will still install the right uh, model packages, <coughs> uh, and there will be a way to see automatically the parse it to see which ones you need to review, which ones you need to add. Yeah, basi basically, we uh, this, this is the, uh, this is where we don't want to introduce new pa new package names for new ABIs. Yes. And. Uh, with the kernel packages, we, we want to do that because we want to have multiple options available to the user. Here we want to, uh, we, we basically don't want multiple options because we we, we just want to make a transition from one to the other and we want to make it as smooth uh, as possible. For example, uh, I think the auto builders ca uh, could, uh, could also uh, learn uh, that uh, uh, when a uh, library package is un un uninstallable because the API uh, of a dependency uh, changed, that it automatically uh, schedules a binary rebuild. So, uh, so but, uh, if all goes well, if, uh, an API transition would be uploading the new compiler, and uh, the auto builders would, would sort out the rest. Uh, yes, that would be nice. Take some time. What do we have to do? We just have to add this D package, right? Uh, D package and out. Yeah. So what I just <coughs> do. And 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 the archive calls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the archive uh, can. Yeah. Whitney would have to handle that. I think uh, for unstable we don't care because uh -huh. uh, the auto builders uh, would have to sort it out. Unstable get uh, unstable is then broken during a transition and. Well, maybe maybe it could uh, could be done in a staging area or something like that. So, yeah, but the difference to, to the to the templates is that uh, that with the templates you want multiple packages at the same time. Yeah, and the problem is that if are not allowed to have multiple version of the same package installed, so that's yeah. yeah. And uh, th these are specifically com conflicting packages since they have the same zone name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, good so. yeah. Any any other? Okay. When do you have an agenda for that? Uh, I tr tried to make one some years ago. <laughs> it seems to me the thing to do with this is just to do it. Yeah. And then and extend because we don't have to use it, do we? I mean, yeah, it's something you can just choose to use. But, or or we, do we have to force it on everybody on a, on a day kind of thing? No. So we should just make it the facility available. And, yeah. then, and then start battering people to use it. You know, yeah. I mean, if this existed, we might have tried using it for REL. Oh, like well, can you do for our yeah. package as well? Well, we can use it on the next transition. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not at least another 10 years. Yeah. So, okay, my um, little wacky idea is that for from my Gentus perspective, Debian dependency are way too static. They're quite like there are some ways to specify like based on architecture, like lib, full whatever, arm stuff like that, or for the kernel for libsy. But this is still like uh, not a very generic solution. But on the other hand, there are quite some packages that could. Uh, make very good use of deciding automatically what dependency you want. For example, there are quite some conventions like uh, package name dot dash dev dash doc dash that gdb stuff. Uh, so, and there's, as far as I'm aware, no uh, way to say to the package management system, hey, I'm a developer, I will be compiling, so so for everything that I want to install, I want to have the headers, the static libraries for it, and it should be absolutely trivial to add to some, like, suggest field, like, a flag, like, these are doc dependencies, these are dev dependencies, so if I have some uh, flags, let's call them, the gentle way would be use flags, in the app config or whatever the package config, then it will make the suggestions real dependencies and merge them automatically. 
in the same way you can do, you have like several packages compiled GNOME flavored, KDE flavored, console flavored, so you can do that. I want to install this package. If you find it uh, GNOME flavor, then better for me install GNOME flavor, so I don't have to. I have announced the idea. Yeah. You, you uh, have. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know. But when mm. you said, what you said, saying, I want, always want all the dash devs installed. No. Um, the the matching dash devs for for the library packages you have. Uh, the matching, the, the, the matching header files, for example. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. relationship is in dev tags. Like, you can manage to use dev tags to, find, to know yeah. which package to install. I have another nasty idea. And, uh, the, the idea would be uh, to, to allow more Boolean operators uh, in dependency yeah. specifications. Like, uh, not only AND and OR, or, uh, um, we, we don't even have proper AND at the moment, um, proper parentheses. Uh, but an implication operator, like if uh, if we have uh, if we have GCC conditional, thing. yeah, yeah. So for example, you could do like for example, let's say you have GNOME whatever, then install uh, GNOME, or if you have KD, then install full. KD, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. So and this would be prioritizing not only by order but by the flags you have set up as well as. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm actually thinking about a uh, real Boolean algebra here, but uh, that uh, that's the gig in me. Yeah. No, that actually works quite well. We have that in the end to dependencies, and it's absolutely nice. To have well, so you're saying, saying make the dependency smarter? Make the dependency, yeah. yes. It's much smarter it's because it's there is absolutely no point to impose a decision for each package on the end user because if like he's using GNOME, he will probably want as much as he can mm -hmm. doing GNOME. But this, uh, so far, the OR operator is like very static with right. how it so behaves. This is useful like if you want the packages targeted for the known desktop or KDE desktop basically. Yeah, basically. Or if you want documentation or if you want support for Perl, for Python and some packages there are oh, like yeah. Mozilla plugins, okay, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, there are quite some things. Yeah, it's usually obvious what you pick, even what yeah. you've got. Yeah. So uh, you have a, a totally static dependency. So it's not entirely static, is it? Because we've got yeah. laws, you, you can choose one text thing or the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. It has, it has, an, it has an, a really interest, uh, interesting use case. Um, spell it because I don't see much. Yeah, okay. Uh, that, 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 um, uh, that you could have a meta package that, uh, uh, for example, that pulls in support for, uh, for some, some language. And um, uh, GNOME has a dependency that says, if this meta package is installed, we also pull in uh, our uh, our language files for this language. Well, bindings, you mean? Like the bindings? Yeah, uh, li uh, mostly like uh, conditional dependencies. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, the idea would be to have a, a full Boolean algebra on, on dependencies. Like, uh, like you can say, right. uh, yeah. depends A implies B. Okay. Um, if you so, so I don't you do that, you have a quite huge kind of wrong because yeah. what happens if you install the package later? Like, does the you know does the package get installed, removed? What what happened then? I should think for yeah. languages you want a different mechanism. Languages are orthogonal to packages. And I don't yeah. think we should use. You're right. You could use this package to sort of hack that. But yeah. I think that's a bad yeah. solution. To uh, taking a problem. Actually, I don't think it's a good idea to uh, make that boolean decision based on install package name because in sometimes you want to have package installed just for testing for playing with them but you want to have uh, your system configured in a completely different way yeah. so it would be better to have on some fields that the user select and something like that and not on based on what packages you have installed so yeah it's an example of of language yeah. 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 This is, this is, uh, it's a bad example 
I see no kind of support whatsoever in Debian that we all have to, um, you know, if what happened if I enabled the option before, like after installing the package that had the decisions not to install the dependency because of the question mark, whatever. Yeah, that, that, that's what, uh, that's, uh, the, there's Julian really Algebra would solve this. Because if, if you, ins uh, if you have, uh, have a depends A implies B, and you install A, then, then you pull in B. So, so you basically say, uh, if no, what if, if you install B later, what happens to A then? Nothing. Yeah. But you could have some mechanism uh, like uh, uh, um, the package update conditional no, I dependency. Yes. I think he meant meant something else. What if you have a uh, use something, and then you install A, which implies B, then yeah. you change that use. So you don't want to use it later. What happens to B? What happens to A in that case? Yeah, that's I think the, that that's the problem. The, yes. the package that's manager would have to sort it out. It, it, basically, uh, the A impl uh, depends. Uh, A implies B uh, would allow an, uh, another package C to, to say that A depends on B. If I uh, if this package is installed, then A depends on B. That's that's basically the same thing. Mm. So we're you talking about context, basically, isn't it? I mean, if there's uh, um, in a user context, like it's, it's like the developer package. Yeah, it's like uh, the GNOME package could uh, could say, um, if uh, um, I depend <coughs> on uh, I uh, I depend uh, depend on the the, the the relationship between um, language support uh, the uh, language support method package and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the the language support uh, for GNOME having a, a certain relationship, for example, uh, uh, which would be an implication relationship. Either the uh, the, the the meta package is not installed, or uh, or both are installed, or just my packet uh, is installed. I mean, the problem we sometimes have with users is is a shifting context. So. Um, they install the distro and for like a week they're happy, mm -hmm. and then like after a week they discover that they need a develop package because mm -hmm. they need to uh, build some sorts of they need to. Uh, quite a common one is they want to uh, make uh, proprietary graphics modules, and so they need kernel headers, mm -hmm. and so then their context switches from someone who doesn't need develop packages yeah. to somebody who suddenly does need develop packages yeah. and headers. So and they don't know how to manage that because they're like, well, I was looking for the develop package and it wasn't installed. Yeah, the, 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 um, if you if you if you install the meta package, install all development packages. Right. Then then all the library packages suddenly depend on all the, on the dev uh, development packages. So mm. so you install the meta package and you pull in all the de uh, development packages. So that, mm. that would work. But that's huge. Yeah, well, all yeah, huge. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but you can uh, you okay. don't have to make them only uh, global flags. You can use make them some, like some override. Like for this package, I want this and that flag. But build devs will do that, won't you? Add get build dev. So I can install just the build dependencies for that, for that yeah. package. Yeah. Yeah. We'll bring in even the tools. Yeah, yeah but this only works for build dependencies, not like for other semantic yeah. dependencies. Yeah. 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 You're right. There is. There are currently kind of implicit assumptions that the the, the build the dependency tree is fairly static. And if we make it smarter like this, some of those assumptions break. And I'm not quite sure, as you said, that it's yeah. actually, I mean, it does seem like a good idea, but there are things to think through, other about exactly what happens and whether it really solves the problems we think it solves. It just I'm creates like right now. I'm getting yeah. confused. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the question is: Should should we th uh, think of uh, 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 over all of this over lunch and meet again here yeah, yeah, in later lunch time? Yeah. 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 Yeah.